you're about to undertake episode four, part two, on controls during this ongoing saga on the history of central heating. But if this is your first video, you're starting at the wrong place. You need to go back to uh, episode one and start from there. If you just want to watch about controls, you've even started at the wrong place too, because this is part two. You need to go back to part one and start there. You just wouldn't start the history at the middle, would you? You will always go back to the beginning. Anyway, let's get back to it. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers. The uh, first part I want to look at now is the workings of the three port motorized valve in a wide plan system. So let's have a look at that now. Now let's look at this valve actually moving. So now I'm going to turn the cylinder stat on and let's see what happens to the valve. So the boiler and pump has come on and you can see from it moves just a little tiny bit. That's all it's moving. Okay, so that's hot water mode. Let's turn that off. And let's turn the heating on. So we turn the stat on, we still have no movement yet. You can see the valve start to move a little bit more and it's gone completely slack, completely right across. So that's now in central heating mode. And if I turn the hot water on, it's now you could hear the valve went into mid position. This has still stayed slack, but you could hear the motor had turned it into mid position. So let's turn the heating off. Heating's now off. Water's now on. And it's now going back into the water mode. It's as easy as that. The next control I want to talk about is the cylinder stat. Now the cylinder stat plays a bigger part in a Y plan than it does in an S plan. So in a Y plan it would use all three connections, in an S plan it will only use the two connections. So let's have a look at these connections. So we can see here now a common. Okay, so it says number one common. Here it says number two, NC, stands for normally closed. And on this side, it's number three with an NO, which stands for normally open. So this common wire is a wire which will come from your hot water switch on your time clock or your programmer. This one here, you're normally closed, that would be on number two and it would go to your orange wire on your zone valve, which would bring your boiler and pump on. In this one, the normally open one, which is number three, this would go to your grey wire on your zone valve, which would then go down to your hot water off on your time clock or your programmer. So that would be on a Y plan. On an S plan, you would have in your wire from your programmer into your common or your number one, and then it would go out to number two to the brown wire on your zone valve. We would not use the number three one you normally open on an S plan. Y plan, yes, S plan, no. So that's the first way you would be able to tell the difference. This would be strapped to the cylinder and it would use a cable which would go across here and all the way around the cylinder. So this is the mark where the, the cable would go to secure it to the cylinder. So this would be pressed against the cylinder. Back is the thing what makes it work. So this is your temperature by metal strip and you'll see that better when we open it up on the inside. So this will be pushed against the copper cylinder 
not against the insulation, against the cylinder, and it would regulate the temperature from that. So when I turn the dial at the top, it will click. So it's clicking there, clicking off, there and there. So what that's doing is it's trying to tell us the room temperature, but obviously it's not that accurate because it's trying to do the room. The room temperature in is about 30 degrees and that's saying it's about 45 degrees. So that would be calling for heat and this wouldn't be calling for heat. So that would be off. So let's have a look inside. So basically I've just got this on the audible alarm. If I put my two connections together, you can hear it buzz in, and you can see the reading on the screen. So, if I put my red lead on my common, and if I go on this one, there's no buzz, but if I go on this one, that's saying the temperature is up. So that is made the temperature. We know it's turned off. So that's diverting the power from your common to number three. And as we know, number three would go down to your hot water off on your um, time clock programmer and would keep your heating running when your hot water was satisfied. Now, if we put the cover back on and we turn it till it comes on and clicks, so we've now set the water to 60 degrees and this will be calling for heat so we take the cover back off and we go on to common and on to normally closed now we're now getting a reading on normally closed but we won't on the normally open so the number two now that would be sending it down our orange wire to bring our pump and our boiler on. So if I wanted to test this for power coming in, I would need a neutral, I would need an earth to be able to do it. But without any power on, I can check whether this is actually turning on or off. And that's the easiest way to do it. I always do it without the power on, it's the safest way. I always follow safe isolation uh, procedure before attempting any of this. Now, this is your standard Damfoss two-channel clock. Two-channel because we've got hot water on this side and we've got heating on this side. If this was a single-channel clock, say doing a combi boiler, then we would only need this side. We wouldn't need the hot water side because the hot water would be permanent on our combi. So this would be used on a Y plan or an S plan. If we take the cover off, which is just held on by two screws, here and here, it's just a standard back plate, okay? Standard back plate used by quite a few manufacturers. So if we look here, it says N. So that's where our neutral wire would go. And then we've got next one here, which you see is L, which is our permanent live. So this would need a permanent live to it to make sure the clock works and keeps going when the heating's turned off. This is where our earth point would be but this is all plastic so technically that earth is not required in this situation now then if we look at number one which is this terminal here number one is our domestic hot water off okay so that's where we would get our number three from the zone valve going from our gray wire down to our hot water off okay in number two, which we see here, number two is our heating off, which we would not use. Number three is our domestic hot water on, and number four is our heating on. So we will be using those to go out to our stats. So this is where the power would come from, from the stats. neutral, permanent live, and we'd use number one on a Y plan, but we wouldn't use number one on an S plan. We would only use three and four to control through our cylinder stats and room stats. So this is your basic back plate for your programmer time clock.
Now let's have a look at this board. This board represents the wiring of a Y-Plan central heating system. We can tell it's a Y-Plan because of the three port valve. You can see we've got the A, B, the A and the B. We know it's a Y-Plan, not an S-Plan because an S-Plan would have two, two port valves. So we have a full programmer to start with. Full programmer because under the building regulations part L, we need to have full time control for our hot water and our heating. So we have two separate sides. This side is hot water, this is central heating. So we can individually program them or we can have them on at the same time. Next, we've got a cylinder stack. The cylinder stack would be installed in the bottom third of the cylinder to give us our optimum water temperature. And the room stack would be installed no more than 1.5 meters off the floor to give us again our optimum temperature within the room. So the bulb we've got here is representing the boiler, okay? The boiler and the pump. We're saying the pump has been wired into the boiler like it will do with the pump overrun on the part L of the building base. Part L of the building regulations England and Wales contains the requirements for the conservation of fuel and power. Now let's see how this sequence of operation works. Let's start with the hot water. So I've got the room stack turned off, so it's on 10 degrees, it's turned off. My programmer is turned off. I'm going to turn it on now so it's reads uh, on on there. So it's now reading on and the red light has come on. So that's now telling me I'm now asking the stack to work. Now the stack is turned all the way down or it could be uh, it's up to full temperature. So the boiler and the pump hasn't turned on. So when I turn the stat on, instantly the bulb came on. Instantly the boiler fired up because its priority is hot water. And it's in the hot water mode and we can tell that because the lever only moves a tiny little bit. Just a tiny little bit. So we know the hot water now, the boiler and the pump would be on. If I turn that back down, it's now gone off, okay? Turn the programmer off in the opposition. So, we're now going to turn on the central heating. So I'm going to turn it on so it comes on. Because the stat's turned off, we've still got no light on. Now, there's going to be a slight delay when I turn this on because the valve has to move into the hot water position before it brings that on. So you can hear the click. We've got nothing on. It's now moving the valve over. You can hear the little click and then the boiler and pump came on. So you can hear the micro switch work with inside the valve. So we've now got that on. If I turn this off, it's gone off instantly. Now if I ask it to come back on again, it doesn't need to move into any other position. It's going to stay in that position because it always stays in its last position of calling. If I turn it on, this will instantly come on then. So it didn't need to move the valve first and check it, it already stayed in that position. So if I turn this off now, and I now want to turn the hot water on, we've got the priority hot water and it's moving the valve back. Because remember, number two on this stack would automatically put the power straight onto the boiler and pump, not worrying about the valve. So the valve's now in the right position. When I turn this onto central heating and hot water, it will now go into the mid position when I turn this on. So I'll click from the start again, and now the valve will go from being quite firm to being floppy. Okay, floppy? Can you say floppy? Not stiff? Anyway, so it's moved now into the mid position. And we will be able to tell that by blowing through there and we get air coming out of both sides. So that's basically the sequence of operation. So if I turn any of these off, so I'll turn the room stat off first, the boiler has stayed on because it's still asking for hot water. And I will turn the hot water off and now the valve has gone back into the uh, hot water priority. So that's the sequence of operation. Now let's look at this stat in more detail. So as you can see, the stat is turned off. Our programmer 
is now calling for heat on the heating side. So if I turn the start on, you'll hear a click, and the boiler and pump has come off. Okay, I turn it off, you can hear it's gone off. Now you go to a central heating system and the fault being the heating's not coming on, it could either be the fault with the programmer or a fault with the actual stat itself. Now this type of stat requires uh, power to make it work. So if I turn the selector switch off here, and now we look at the room stat and I turn it on, you will not hear a click. There is no power going through to it now. So if we got a click on this with the power turned on, so let's turn the power turn back on. Okay. So we know that's working correctly. Now let's just take that off. Now what we've got here, we've always remember to follow the safe isolation procedure before removing anything electrical. And if you're not trained or competent to do so, then you shouldn't be attempting any of this. So I'm gonna use my multimeter now to test the power coming in. So I've put my uh, multimeter leads on the black lead onto the blue cable, which is our neutral, and the red lead onto the brown cable, which is our live. So if I've got 230 volts coming into here, which I have, 248 coming in, so I know I've got power coming into there. The only problem is now is I can't test whether I've got power going out. I'm on the two leads, on the neutral and across the live, and I've got zero voltage because it needs the cover on to work. So in this type of stat, if you've got power coming in, but nothing is working and you've got no power going down the brown lead, then is every chance the stat is broken. But if I haven't got power coming in, then there's every chance the program is broken. So if we didn't have power coming down the, la the number one and two, or the live and neutral, um, or the neutral and live as it is in this, uh, this way, then it's the programmer what's broke. Yes. Now let's look at this automatic bypass. So this little thing here is an automatic bypass. As you can see here is the pressure in which the spring will be lifted inside to allow the water to come through. So the way this works and what it does is, this is our boiler, this is our flow pipe coming down here to the pump. The pump then would pump down and down to the controls here. So you can see there's two valves, so this is going off to the central heating. This is going off to this hot water cylinder. So this is an S plant. When these two valves close, if this pump carried on running, it would be pumping against the stopped end. That's pump overrun for part L of the building regulations. So we require an automatic bypass. So when the pressure increases in the system, the spring is overcome and it allows the water to come back here and circulate around the system. So basically, it's the opposite way to a thermostatic radiator valve. So this only required, like I say, on a S plan, not required on a Y plan, and that is our automatic bypass. Well, I hope that's improved your knowledge on Y plan and S plan control systems, and you've got a little bit more understanding on how they work. So let's move on now to uh, boilers. We've just completed part two, episode four on controls during this ongoing saga of the history of central heating. If you've enjoyed this video, why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment in the comments section below. While you're down there, why don't you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done it or hit the notification bell because every Wednesday we're going to be releasing new videos. Hopefully you're looking forward to number five because it's all about boilers. See you soon.